That's what's important. It's not too annoying. Um, as, as most of you know, me and Pam went to Chicago uh, over the holidays, and we were able to, you know, fly to the beach walking. And uh, <laughs> fortunately, on this trip, I was able, both going and coming, to secure exit seats. Now, if you haven't flown, that doesn't mean anything to you. Or if you're not long-legged, that doesn't mean anything to you. But for those of you who aren't familiar with the layout of an aircraft, the exit seats located over the wing have the most leg room. Big deal when you're 6'3". They're at the very front of the plane. I haven't checked out the cockpit, but I don't know what kind of leg room they have there, but otherwise, this is the most spacious part of the plane for your journey, which is, a, like I said, a big deal for me. Now, with that location comes some responsibilities. And if you've flown recently, you'll know that if you're in those seats, that the, the flight attendant will come up to you and say, you are sitting in an exit row. I need to know if you are able, physically able and willing, in the case of an emergency, to open that door to allow everyone to exit the plane. And I'll need a verbal yes from each and every one of you. And so... Everyone says, yes, we don't want to go to that seat. I don't, I don't know if they're actually <laughs> capable of doing that. But they say yes, because they want to keep that nice, comfy seat. And, and as she did that, she, they proceeded to give the other instructions. Now, if you've never flown an airplane, they always give safety instructions before they take off. In other words, they say, if there's an emergency, you know, you need to do this. Uh, they show you where the exits are, right? And they, they pull out the light vest and they say, you know, if you crash in the water, you're going to need to secure this. And, and if it doesn't inflate, by pulling on this, you need to blow in here on this tube. They give you all those instructions. They tell you where everything's at, everything to do in an emergency, right? If, in other words, if we get into trouble, this is what you're going to need to do. Now, I noticed as they were doing that, that only part of the people were listening. Now, there were people all around me and looking up and down the thing, and they were on their phones trying to get through whatever they needed, Facebook or whatever they couldn't do without for two hours and, and trying to get all that done or on their laptop or iPad or whatever, whatever they had, they, they were ignoring it. Some were already into their book they were reading and some were in conversation, but only a few people were actually listening to these instructions. Now, it seems to me that that was important stuff to know. But a lot of people, and maybe, maybe it's because they, they'd flown before and knew the layout of the aircraft, and chose to really ignore to see if there have been any changes, any updates in the information. They have pretty much chose not to listen, not to be engaged, right? To just kind of be complacent. You know? They're caught up in their own world. Oh, I've heard this a hundred times. It never changes. You know, all I hear is what they're doing is blah, 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 blah. blah. Kind of like y'all and me and sermons. You know? All I hear is I've heard this blah, 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 blah. blah. And, 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 you know, and some people were like me. They were just settling in for a nap, right? I was just getting comfortable so I could go to sleep. But anyway, they were very complacent. They only had the attention of a very, what, few people. Only a few people on the plane were actually paying attention to what they were taking time to say. Now, with that being said, it really kind of disturbed me because it made me think of our churches. It made me think about how complacent we are at times, right? How we come to church and we sit, and there's it not a whole lot of excitement in our churches anymore, is it? That sometimes we're just kind of, hmm. I mean, we're coming out of Christmas, right? Just Christmas was just a few weeks ago. You probably have, still remember the bills, but forget the gifts that you gave, right? And today's what? Epiphany, right? It's the day that we celebrate the wise men coming to see Jesus. And in some countries, that is Christmas to them. In some countries, that's when they exchange their gifts. And it's a really big deal. It's not as big a deal in the United States. We've already opened our presents. We've already given our gifts, right? And exchanged our gifts. But to them, like my mom was from Cuba. She said the big day was, was today. That's when they exchanged their gifts. And at Christmas, you got one gift. That was it. And then they get more, the stuff came on, on Epiphany. So in some places, the excitement 
is there today around the world, right? So whether you're excited about Christmas, the magic of Christmas, or if you're in another country and you're excited about Epiphany more so than we are in this church, because I haven't seen anybody standing and holler and say, I got, guess what I got today in New Mercedes, and it's really nice. And, and we don't see anybody doing that. But, but what I'm saying is whether it's Christmas or Epiphany, it's a time of excitement. It's a, it's a magical time, right? Am, am I right? Amen. Amen. Okay, I just want to make sure I was right. So, so it's a magical time, and we should be excited. And it's, it's a magical time because we change a little bit, don't we, during Christmas? Right? Aren't we a little kinder? Let's be honest. Aren't we a little more giving, a little more kinder, a little more forgiving? For the most part, most of us are a little more patient, maybe, than we are all year long. Would you say that's a fair statement? You know, because it's Christmas. It's the happiest time of the year. It's supposed to be like that, right? And so, so naturally we're like that. But then it comes the end of Christmas or the Epiphany, and, and, and we start putting our Christmas decorations away, don't we? We put our star away. We put our tree away. If we have a, or take it outside and take it to wherever we take them, or, or, or you know, we take all the ornaments down. We have to box them up, right, make sure they're settled in. We take all that stuff down, and then sometimes I think we take down all those things that we, we had at Christmas. We, we take our, our kindness and our forgiveness and our patience, and our giving spirit, and we pack it away with our ornaments so they'll be there next year when we need to take it out. Right? Maybe we're just not quite as giving and kind and forgiving and comforting and sympathetic as we were just, just a few weeks ago. So we've left that season, and now we're entering a new season, a new year, and the question is, what do we do with it? Each of you has been blessed to see 2019. Amen. So we know, we know we, we've had friends and family even here in the church that, that did not make that journey. So I, I'd say I, I feel blessed. I feel blessed to be in 2019. With any aches and pains I got, I'm good. Thank you for letting me wake up today. Thank you for letting me to, to be here today, right? And, and I'm excited because with a new year comes new opportunity, Right? Every day presents you with a new opportunity to do something different. And with that, <clears throat> we need to be excited. You see, a couple of weeks ago, we were excited because we were celebrating what? <laughs> celebrating, y'all going to be caged in. <laughs> <laughs> we were celebrating Christmas, right? We were celebrating Emmanuel, God with us, right? God's gift to us and to all mankind, right? That he sent his son to what? Come and live and die for us, right? To pay for our sins, to rise again. That we may know the resurrection and what awaits us one day. Right? And we celebrated that beginning, of, to, so to speak, of, of God here on earth. Of Emmanuel with us. Right? And we were excited about it. Weren't we? Amen. Amen. But are we as excited about that today? as we were just a few weeks ago. I'm really getting to feel the HD guy. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to stand here. The, uh, this is torture. In just case you didn't know. Um, but we, we are we as excited as we were just a few weeks ago. And if not, why not? What has changed? We still celebrate God with us. We still celebrate Emmanuel. We still celebrate the presence of Christ. So if our excitement has changed, is that on God or is that on us? We should keep that same level of excitement each and every day. We should be overfilled with excitement. We should have a pep in our step, a glide in our, a, a slide in our glide, whatever that is. We should be, we should be happy. We should be walking a little bit a little bit quicker, a little bit happier, a little bit more so than the rest of the world. We should have smiles on our faces when nobody understands why. That's hard to do sometimes. Because life happens, doesn't it? But still, it's our obligation, it's our commitment, it's what we've been called to do, to be excited, to be different, to walk different, to walk a little taller. To put a little pep in your step. Some of you say, I just wish I had a step. <laughs> well, try to get a step there. You don't have a step. 
But whatever it is that you do, we need to do it with pride and with excitement. We need to let that excitement spill over into the world and not just here on Sundays. We need to take it from this place to that out there in the world, right? Now, you know, excitement's a little hard. It's one of those things that you get so caught up in, you can't help yourself, right? If you're been so excited, you just couldn't help yourself. You just, before you knew it, you were in no man's land, right? You were like, oh, how did I get here? Man, I got a little overzealous, right? I got a little too excited for where I was supposed to be. I remember the story of a coach of a football game back in, I think, 1983. It was Fresno State Wolf, no, excuse me, Nevada Reno Wolfpack and Fresno State Bulldogs. And the game was closed, it was back and forth, and, and with about eight minutes to go in the game, the, the running back from the Wolfpack broke free from the line of scrimmage and scampered down the sidelines for an 89-yard touchdown to put the Wolfpack ahead. Now, what most people didn't see was along the sidelines, his coach was so excited that he was running alongside him. Cheered him on. Cheered him. And before he knew it, he had passed the 20 yard line. You see, there's a box that coaches have to stay in. It's 20 to 20. And, and if you go past there, there's a 15 yard penalty. Well, realize that he had crossed that line, he decided to keep on running. And he ran all the way down the field, up the ramp, and out of the stadium. Because he figured if, if, if he did that, maybe the referees would think there was some kind of emergency or something, he wouldn't get penalized. And, and they found him hiding behind the truck. One of the fans for Fresno State, they said, aren't you the coach of the Wolfpack? He said, I, I don't know, man, I'm just looking for a hot dog stand. <laughs> you know? But it didn't matter what his excuse was, he got a little too excited, and when he went back on the field, he found out that his team indeed had been penalized 15 yards with the gay deal team. Uh, good field position, and they ended up kicking a winning field goal. Now, <laughs> sometimes our excitement can can get us too far in or farther than we want to go. But you got to admire the guy's excitement, don't you? you got to admire how excited he was for his team and for his players and how committed he was that he ran out of the stadium just trying to save them, right? That's commitment. That's excitement. I think our churches are missing that in a lot of ways. That our churches don't grasp how excited we should be. I know what you think. We're not Pentecostal. <laughs> and don't try to make us that way because we're just not going to do it. And I get that. Don't worry. I'm not trying to make you Pentecostal. But, but, but you have to admire that they worship with full spirit. Amen. They worship with excitement. They're glad to be there. They don't mind yelling out amen. Sometimes <laughs> I think we're afraid to yell out amen. What does amen mean? Let it be. Let it, so let it be, right? And, and, and Hebrew would translate truth. In other words, you know, kind of like slang, you say something, they say, truth. Truth, that's the truth. That's the truth. So there's nothing wrong with you hear something that's the truth. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I, I believe that. <laughs> you know, but some of us, like, we want to say it, we're like, mm, no, don't think I'm going to cost them. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. But there's nothing wrong with yelling amen if you hear the truth. Right? Yeah. So if I come over here and I say, Jesus Christ is the one and only Son of God, what would y'all say? Amen. Amen. God, it's not your turn. <laughs> what would y'all say? Amen. 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 Very good. And I said, and God sent him, God sent him to earth for everyone. Amen. Everyone to pay the price for their sins. What would you say? Amen. Amen. And though they thought they had defeated him on the cross, he rose again on the third day. What would you say? Amen. Amen. Those are all truths. Right? So when you hear a truth here in church, don't be afraid to yell out amen. I won't judge you. It may, it may throw me off a little bit, but I won't judge you. <laughs> if you get moved by the Spirit, then you do it. Don't you worry about who's sitting next to you, what they're going to say, what the, how they're going to judge you. Because if the Spirit's moving you, then you'd be moved. But anyway, I got off the subject. I just, I just wanted to... Just want to say, I, I, I'm not trying to make you a Pentecostal. What I am trying to do is I want you to get excited. I want you to be excited about being in church. 
I don't want you to be like the people on the, on the plane that are distracted by what everything else is going on in the world and we're just trying to fix it on our iPhone or our Facebook or, 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 or put up there at church. You know, uh, whatever, whatever that is. But you don't need to be distracted by all those things at church. Some of you right now are making your grocery list in your mind. <laughs> now, you're in the wrong place. You need to be here. Be present. You're present. Be present. Enjoy God in your presence. Enjoy the fellowship that comes from gathering in this place with our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we may glorify God in our song and in our words, that we may draw closer to Him through His Word, that we may be equipped to go from this place and transform the world. You see, if we're not excited here, how do you ever, ever, ever expect to be excited out there? If we can't get excited here in church, if we can't smile and have a good time here in church, if we can't be lifted up here in church, how do we expect to go out there and lift others up? This isn't a social club, though. It's good to be in the presence of our friends and our family, but we shouldn't mistake that for that's it. That's all there is. That's all we're here to check the box. I went, I sang two of the three songs, and I heard the preacher, it was blah, 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 <laughs> said a few amens, we did communion, we left, check the box, I'm done. I'll see y'all next time. That's not the way it's meant to be. That's not what this is all about. This is training. This is so where you come and you get rejuvenated. You get excited. You get filled with the Spirit so that you can exit this building and you can go out and transform the world by your actions. By your words. By the things you do. You know, we're called to be ambassadors for Christ, but you can't be an ambassador and never leave the embassy. You're not going to change anybody. We're friends here. We talk to each other here. We hug and, and, and shake hands and smile at each other. But there's plenty of people out there who need a handshake and a hug and a smile each and every day. And you're going to encounter them or need a kind word. They need something that's going to lift them up from where they are to where God wants them to be. And that's your job. So, wow. Ah, God man. He, he ain't called me to do that. He ain't called me to do that. I, I, he, when I hear that, you know what I think? I think about the private back in basic training. Now, now those of you who've been in the Army are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. They got drill instructions. They got these brim hats, right? Man, those hats are hard. They say there's brims. And, and this, one, this one drill sergeant said to, said to the platoon, he said, forward, march. And the whole platoon moved forward except for one private. He stood still. Real sergeant stopped the platoon. He went back to the private and he got in his right ear. That brim hit him right there. He said, Does this ear work? He said, Sir, yes, sir. And then he went around to the left side. Does this ear work? He said, Sir, yes, sir. He said, Well, then how come you didn't move forward when I commanded that? The platoon moved forward. He said, Sir, you didn't call me by name. <laughs> That's not the way it works. <laughs> That's not the way it works then. That's not the way it works now. If you have that experience where you individually feel the hall, that's great. But, God, but Jesus Christ put out a blanket command before he left this earth. And that covers, a blanket command covers everything. It recovers, it applied to the disciples then, the disciples in between, the disciples now. Because without that command, without those disciples going forward, without them spreading the word, you wouldn't be sitting here today. And as we look forward to 2019 and even beyond, if no one goes out there and spreads the good news of the gospel, it will surely die. You say, but I'm old. No, you're not. No, you're not. 
You just experienced. <laughs> You've experienced life. It gives you the upper hand. It gives you the knowledge. And it gives you the, the ability to go out and to share your life experiences and what God has put into your life more so than just a young person. But young people have things to say too. Young people have things to say too. As they enter their schools and they see unkindness, you can correct that. You can stand up for those who are less fortunate. It starts young. You can be kind. You can be giving. You can be all those things that you see in your parents and in other adults. It starts with you and it builds up. That's what we're all called to do, though. It's not just for the children, it's not for the middle aged, it's for every single one. We're all called to be kind. He said, Teach the commands I've already given you. What are the commands he's already given? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all that you are. To love your God. And to love your neighbor as yourself. If we just follow those two things, we'll be all right. If we just go out to the world and follow those two things, people will see Christ in us. And they will come to know the Christ that we know, the Christ that we love, the Christ that saved us in a personal, loving way. Because we're each called, remember last week I said, be better tomorrow than you are today? If we all strive to do that, and if we all strive to be closer to God in 2019, it can't help but be an outpouring of who we are. Because what's on the inside eventually always rises to our mouths and what we say and what we do. You see, you can't get too much God. Because we're all, we're all sinners. We're all in need of a Savior. Somebody better say amen to that. Amen. amen. We don't like to admit that. Charles made a point this morning. He heard a point. I hope I don't mess this up. I heard him back. Charles said... There are, he's been in a lot of prison cells. And he's had a lot to do with prisons, and he's seen the people who are in prison. But he said there's more criminals out here in the world than there are in prison. 